what's up everybody it's Rox and I'm coming to you today with review for Love and Hip Hop ATL season 3 episode 11 so let's get to it shall we all right you guys so Kalina she and super pussy at the strip club okay you know they're doing what they do best which is turn up they having so much damn fun that Kalina ain't getting no work done okay and Kalina is starting to feel pulled every which away and get this <laughs> Ashley then took her cell phone because Ashley feels like Tony calling too much and uh, you know Kalina is getting distracted from her and I was just like oh so she takes the cell phone so her husband can't call her <laughs> I don't know about Kalina but I'm gonna tell you about mister you asking for a for real argument okay nigga you don't answer that goddamn phone <laughs> Get your ass home. Yeah, you be out with all that having fun and shit. You get home to the most flared nose, pissed off, sitting at the door like I done called your fucking ass 25 times. <laughs> it just don't make no sense to me, okay? Is Ashley her bitch? I mean, fuck, we thought I thought she was her best friend, okay? Now we got all this other shit. I told you guys that threesome storyline is foolishness. Now, Tony is tired of the bullshit. He trying to work on this album with Kalina, and Kalina out there fucking around with Ash. So he sits her down, and he was like, listen, you said that Ashley was going to come out here and that you were still going to be able to have fun and stay focused on this album. We got shit to do, okay? We got to stay on the grind, okay? Which is cold word for <laughs> you said that bitch was going to come down here and I was going to give me something. She ain't gave me none, so now the bitch got to go. Tony don't see no benefit nowhere in it for him. All he knows is he got this project and he can't seem to get Kalina focused. So, you know, Kalina, she tries to look up real fast, tries to go off on him or whatever, but then she finally realizes that, okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, uh, maybe I wasn't seeing it, but yeah, I, I understand. I, 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 She need to go. So she sees the error in her ways, but get this you guys she got a damn seven-year-old son in texas living with her mama because <laughs> from what she say they be on the road they be in the studio and you know it's just too much to raise a child now listen i'm not here to be talking about how people raise their children and parenting styles and skills and all that because being a parent is hard work and i have said this plenty of times okay so there ain't no judgment here but what I'm trying to say is, I'm going to be less inclined to feel sorry for you when you on TV with your lesbian slash best friend slash threesome partner with your husband with all this fucking foolishness. You telling us that you got this child at the house that's watching TV. I don't care he's seven years old, okay? Kids know what the hell is going on. This is a national television show. You up here turning up and flashing booties out the windows and, you know, kissing on orange-haired girlfriends friends and yeah what the fuck is going on here maybe i would feel a little bit more sorry for you if you were always in the studio or if you were really on the road all the time but when you on tv with this fuckery okay and you want us to think child when she said she had a seven-year-old son i was too fucking through Girl, get it to fucking together, okay but anyways you guys let me get back to the story so you know tony tells her i need you here with me okay you gonna have to you gonna have to cut ashley this is when the shit get real retarded okay so she goes with uh ashley to dinner because you know she got to break it to her that she got to go so she's telling her like i got to concentrate on my marriage and on my work and then ashley goes well do you love me and she was like yeah i love you but i love tony more and then the ashley is just like well do you love tony more like more and more or do you love me like in a different kind of way and she was just like well i love tony more like i want to be buried on top of him when i die and uh, they ain't really got a space for you know side bitch slash bisexual uh threesome partner lesbian whatever the fuck you want to call it okay ashley gets upset y'all and she you know she gets a little teary eyed and you know Kalina's like no 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 now don't cry now don't cry I was just like oh my god this is just really stupid okay are you really breaking up with your best friend <laughs> okay I told you guys that these threesomes are bad news okay because somebody always finds themselves out it's only room enough in a relationship for two people okay i don't even know why the fuck you would want to have a relationship with three people okay it's enough work with one you trying to be with somebody else and the bitch is a woman okay what the fuck now i'm sitting up here arguing with my husband then i got to turn around over here with this bitch that's on her damn period and it's pre premenstrual and emotional okay and want to be fussing and crying and shit. why would i want to do that <laughs> i never will understand why people do it when you sit down and really think about the work that you put into one relationship. I have no idea why you would try to 
do it with two. Okay? And, uh, you know, I know I'm going to make some people a little upset here, but some of you lesbians is fucking crazy. <laughs> okay? I, I used to work in um, the DA's office in L.A., and, honey, them fi family violence... That family violence unit, honey. Them lesbian relationships, honey. Y'all, some of y'all be fighting. Y'all bitches do not play. And I, and I understand it because this is two women that's emotional. You know, when you be emotional, it be all kind of shit going on. So, honey, I'm... <laughs> Yeah, Kalina, you can have that shit, okay? If you want to be a lesbian, fine. But you, a lesbian and a husband and all of this, yes, yeah, it's, it's entirely too much. I'm going to need you to choose, okay? So Kalina did make the choice. And then to confirm why I say that some lesbians is crazy is, uh, and she turns around like that, okay? All of a sudden, she's just like, well, it's only right. I understand. You know, you're only doing what you're supposed to do. I was just like, what the fuck? So you was just crying, and now you okay with it. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm through with the threesomes. Let's hope that Kalina and Tony and Ashley are done as well. All right, you guys, Tammy Rivera's line is here. T. Rivera, for all of you guys who are out there looking for her line, it is now here. Okay, she wanted to do things a little differently. She wanted to bring New York Fashion Week to Atlanta. I told you guys last week that Atlanta wouldn't know shit about Fashion Week if the shit sat right in front of their face. Okay, we, this is really not the most fashion-forward city. <laughs> But hey, it's okay. If that's what you want, if you want Tammy Rivera's line, I'm going to get it, okay? Like I said, I don't want it. But you know what? If, if they ain't going to knock the hustle, baby, go on do what you do. Walker's there at her, you know, fashion event. And he's real proud of his woman, okay? And, uh, you know, she's real proud of what she's achieved. And, and uh, you know, she's getting emotional when she's telling her speech. You know, she's thanking everybody for being there for her, you know, especially to her future husband, Waka, who's always been so understanding, who's always believed in her, and all that. You know, real touching and, you know, real, you feel good about it. He's proud of his woman and all the shit that she's been able to do fine. Waka wants to get married, and uh, he already told her that, so he's giving her some time to think about it. But, damn it, tonight is the night. What is we going to do? I mean, what the hell else you want? You got your tattoo, and uh, we set. Let's let's get on down there. So, you know what? She's just like, I've been there with him. We've been through so much. And, yeah, it's time to do this. Let's let's go on and go on down to the courthouse and get married. So that's exactly what they do, honey. If y'all was anything like me, you was peering so hard at that fucking TV to look at her finger to see if it was a ring on there, and you guys, bitch, still ain't got no damn ring. <laughs> so just me. Am I, am I being old-fashioned? Am I being, you know, ridiculous and asking that you have some sort of symbol of your love? Um, I don't understand why she can't get no ring, especially when one of my fucking uh, commenters told me last week that the nigga got a full Barbie doll size foghorn leghorn diamond and gold encrusted charm that he hang around his fucking neck. For real? <laughs> now, well, I don't know why nobody ain't told me this before, but what I'm trying to say is we know money is not an object, Okay. Money is not the problem, I should say. I'm not saying that Walker is just paid, 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 but he can afford a fucking $200 band at Walmart, okay? But go on to the swap meet, flea market, whatever they call it out here. Get the child something. You not wanting to get this girl no ring just makes me feel like there is some concern for other people knowing exactly where she stands in your life, okay? So you get her married, okay, and you get her off your back with that, Okay, but she still ain't got no ring, so just to the average person that's looking, she she might not be married, okay? And, uh, you know, we know that Waka got, you know, some, some extra side bitches. As a matter of fact, this week in, in Instagram news, <laughs> it has been quite busy for Mr. Uh, Waka Flock of Flame, okay? One of his side hoes then came out and said that, um, you know, she been fucking with him all this time, and uh, he tried to deny it and say, oh, no, you know, it wasn't nothing going on with her and uh you know he was just like look tammy they trying to break us up and all of that and then the bitch was like yeah well nigga i got a video of your ass eating my ass out <laughs> i was just like oh shit i want to see for the video to come out of the ass eating y'all think walker got some ass eating skills <laughs> let's see do you guys think that he's a is he a poker do he run his tongue around the rim <laughs> do he just latch onto that bitch and just suck <laughs> <laughs> I know that's nasty, huh? Too much information? Okay. And of course, Walker comes back and says she ain't got no damn video of him doing it. So, um, she takes a screenshot of a picture of him, you know, naked in her bed and, uh, and, and puts that out, you know, and like, nigga, keep, keep trying me, nigga, and I'll put the rest out, okay? So, um, 
look, I'm I'm here for the video. <laughs> okay, so I you know I I I just you know you just can't be randomly sucking and licking asses and shit and didn't think that that shit was gonna come out. Listen, I want everybody to lick their own woman's ass. Okay, <laughs> quit all this random ass licking shit. Okay, just one ass per couple. <laughs> Ooh, that shit tickled me. Anyway, after they get married and everything, well, now you know, we have to break the news to Deb and Tammy's mother, Mona. Oh, who did Mona look like? I was looking at that lady. I said, she looks like somebody. And I, I'm just, I could not figure out who she looked like. But, but, so if y'all know, tell me. It's somebody on TV or it's somebody that we know of. But anyway, yeah, y'all tell me what she looked like. Anyway. Um, so they sit Deb and um, and Mona across. And didn't Deb look pretty? I, you know, Deb is actually a very good looking woman. If we just soften her up and shit, okay? You know, get her some earrings and, you know, she was she's beautiful in the face when she was standing, when she was sitting there across from them. I actually thought that she looked very pretty. Her eyes are beautiful. You know, anyway. I'm saying all that to soften it up, y'all. If, if this wasn't the most genuine reaction on a, on this TV show ever, it was when Tammy and Walker told Deb that they was married, okay? That goddamn Deb sat there and that bitch was M-A-D. <laughs> and y'all know she wanted to be like, what the fuck you say you did? What? Ever calm down. You know these cameras is right in front of you. <laughs> some bowls. <laughs> oh shit, yeah, she was pissed off. But maybe the first time in my life I'm at a loss for words because at this time ain't nothing right gonna come out my damn mouth. Anybody else get the feeling that Walker was kind of trying to, you know, get back at Deb? Like, he kind of felt like he took some pleasure in the fact that she was so upset. You know, we all knew that Deb was overstepping. Um, and we all knew that Walker didn't want and really Tammy didn't want what Deb wanted. So, you know, I, I totally get that they did what they had to do, but I still kind of felt just the mother inside of me. You know, I felt kind of sorry for Deb, especially over the fact that, you know, the son just died. You know, this was this one thing that she was holding on to. So, but you know, but like I said last time, you know, it's these people's wedding, and honey, you, you can't plan for what they want. Okay, so you're gonna have to go get yourself a man and get yourself engaged and then go get your own self married, and then that's when you can do all of the fanfare and everything. Okay, and I say that with love, <laughs> Michael Jackson voice. But you know, I, I do feel like the parents do deserve to be a part of the date as well. So, you know, even though I'm mostly on Walker and Tammy's side, I mean, I did get a little bit of Debbie's side as well. I was disappointed that I wasn't able to share that moment. I wanted to give him away because I've been your mother and your father all of his life. And I know Mona wanted to do the same as well, and now it's not going to happen. Deb is like, well, what was the goddamn rush? Okay, I mean, we was already talking about this wedding. I had been downgraded the motherfucker down from a big wedding to this intimate wedding just for the family. And now you want to tell me you didn't ran off and got married. So, you know, what was the goddamn rush? Well, Deb, we got this one little small problem with Waka and the fact that he be licking somebody else's ass. But what can we say other than congratulations to the happy couple? And I'm still going to hold out and, and, and pray that the child get a ring out of the deal. I mean, at least everybody know they married. We'll see what happens from here on out. Oh my God, it's about to start raining. I'm telling you guys, the rain out here just... It just comes from nowhere. It's fucking hot outside. I'm telling you, I hate the summers in Atlanta. When I get rich, you guys, I promise I'm not going to spend my summers here. Okay, but anyway, let me, I just don't want the shit to start lightning and shit. Y'all on the news the other day, this man got hit by lightning. I'm not laughing that the man got hit by lightning, but the man was outside gardening and because the rain just comes out of nowhere out here. So he was in his garden working and shit and all of a sudden it was like this downpour and it was lightning and thunder, okay? So he was like, okay, let me go in the house. Well, man was fixing to get up to get in the house and how about the damn lightning hit him? He had on some um, steel toe boots and y'all, the lightning knocked the man out his boots across his, his yard. And uh, he got knocked out, of course. And when he woke up, he didn't have his sh shoes on. And uh, the motherfucking boots was over there, you know. So he, he had the sense. He figured that maybe he had been hit by lightning. So he took his cell phone out. And, y'all, he took video of everything. The nigga was, first of all, he was white, okay. But the nigga had, 
He, he, he was smoking and shit. It had been singed all the hair off of him. And his goddamn boots was like all twisted up. <laughs> smoking. And uh, yeah, the man survived a lightning hit. Which nobody really survives lightning strikes. That man is 100% blessed. Oh my God. But yeah, when I was watching it on the news the other day, I was like, ain't that some shit? Okay, so anyway, that's why I don't like to be outside when it starts raining and shit because that lightning out here is crazy crazy one time the lightning hit our house not our house but somewhere really close to our house it knocked all the goddamn sockets out in the kitchen okay so yeah we we <laughs> you know that lightning ain't, ain't no joke so yeah i'll be trying to be in the i didn't got all the way off huh let me get back to this goddamn show okay so yeah scrappy so scrappy wants to go talk to erica p okay because uh, from the words of Scrappy, you know, he want to have a talk with her, you know, so he can shut everything down on some, you know, everyone walk away real cool type shit. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, Scrappy, okay. For as many women as he fuck, he don't really know the mind of a woman, honey. It don't work like that. <laughs> this girl likes you, okay. She thought that she was next in line, all right. So uh, it ain't going to be on no real cool walk away type shit. I can tell you that right now. They meet up at this little restaurant and they're sitting there talking. Um, did it? Anybody else peep the fact that everybody else that was at the restaurant would not turn their motherfucking ass around for nothing? Okay, all that commotion that was going down over there, ain't nobody said shit, honey. Mona was like, y'all sit at them damn tables and you don't even look over towards that damn camera. She forgot to tell them if a damn fight jump off what to do. But anyway, let me get back. So, Erica is funky right off the gate. Okay, she talking to Scrappy about, you know, all these damn text messages that he's sending in the middle of the night. Okay, we already know middle of the night text messages is booty call time. Okay, people that send text messages in the middle of the night usually are drunk. Okay, or in their feelings, just like Scrappy said. Okay, that is not excusing it at all. But we need to call it what the fuck it is, ladies. Okay, I'm, I, this is all for the ladies today. Scrappy said he can't be held uh, accountable for the shit that he said when he drunk in his, in his feelings, okay? So if he's sending Texas, okay, I was just like, when the shit become Texas? But yeah, he said he can't be held accountable. You tripping if you think that I meant that shit, okay? And, and I'm just going to break it down for the girl, okay? Listen, men send their side chicks that, okay? If he really wanted to be with you, then he would be with you. See, the problem with side chicks is side chicks get shit kind of all mixed up because a lot of times men do get really close with their side chicks because the side chick is the relief, okay? The side chick is the fun. Uh, the men will go over there and tell the side chick all of their problems, okay? And really lay a lot on them, okay? Because they can't tell a real woman that, okay? Because a real woman don't want to hear it because they've been dealing with your bullshit all this goddamn time. <laughs> so the side chick gets the feeling that, oh my God, he must really trust me. He must really love me because he's telling me all this stuff. But that's not really what it is. See, as the side chick, he really kind of thinking you as his boy. But he's able to fuck you. He don't really want to be with you. He just likes the fact that he's able to do so much more with you. You just to jump off. And I, you know, I, I think Erica got the shit all mixed up, which a lot of women do. Scrappy let her on. And he was wrong for doing so, but she also let herself be led on, okay? So what you needed to do was, I mean, if you wanted to be with him, you needed to make him make a decision, okay? Cut the shit off. Go break that shit up with Bambi, okay? And if you really want to be with me, then come back to me then, okay? And I know, I know. Listen, I didn't been a fool for a man before. Roxanne has been young too, okay? And I have made some very stupid mistakes. And this is why I can tell you, okay? That you can't let yourself get all caught up with ladies, especially young girls. Okay, you just need to know what it is, okay? And then you just need to be able to make some decisions that's best for you and maybe cut the, the shit off. And then just like a man would do, okay, Scrappy pulls old Jedi mind trick and the, and the niggas start blaming her for the shit that he has brought upon them, okay? He's telling her that, you know, she was out of line when she said the shit to Bambi, um, you know, about the miscarriage, which she was, but she had a point when she was just like, nigga, you shouldn't even have invited me to the goddamn thing. You already was out of line by letting me even be there, which we had already discussed that as well. She was like, you was trying to be with me, and he was like, no, I wasn't, and I was just like, no, he wasn't. See, that's what I'm saying. She had that shit all mixed up, okay? So then, of course, now her feelings is hurt, okay? But then it got to come out and all this bravado okay because she was on one page scrappy was on a totally different page so like i said she's upset she's hurt 
she's mad okay they start arguing um he said he starts calling her bum bitches and you know telling her that she's crazy and everything and she's just she just can't believe he's saying all this shit she turns around and says you know what i ought to slap you in your motherfucking face and he was like bitch that'd be the last fucking slap you ever do if you try it <laughs> okay so i mean you know what, what can i say <laughs> he warned her right and all of a sudden the damn screen went black and i was like what the fuck where my remote i was so positive something was wrong with my damn tv i mean this shit happened in like a blink of an eye the screen went black um i was looking for the remote and then i looked back at the screen i realized i could still hear it and then i was like this old janky ass cable i got y'all got direct tv that shit as soon as a goddamn cloud go by that shit go out so but then i noticed still had the little vh1 thing at the bottom i was like you sons of bitches mona no the fuck did y'all didn't just black, black out this goddamn fight i mean yeah i mean i know we can't see no man hitting on no woman and shit and listen i'm not laughing at the fact that he hit her because that shit is absolutely wrong okay but you bitches is gonna get enough of trying these niggas like that now you can't expect it to to, to be hitting on no man and uh shit don't come back on you okay we already know that some men is not above it okay so i guess she had to learn the hard way so because we didn't get to see it on tv now i got to recreate the shit for y'all okay so this is probably how the fight went okay so y'all remember that she had just ordered her margarita and uh, she had it in her cup and she was turning around and she was saying violence violence y'all remember that right well we also know that she probably threw that damn drink at scrappy at which point scrappy probably held his hand out and blocked the thing and with this other hand right here came across and kind of mushed half slapped half hit her right about right here you know that the bitch is real you know she bad on her feet <laughs> she always gonna fall plus we know it's drink on the goddamn floor so she probably slipped and fell down okay at which point he tried to get to her he probably mushed her hair all up because that shit was fucked up in her <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, girl, your situation all messed up. You no, know, at which point the damn security guards rushed in, got scrappy, held on to her. Okay, she's kicking and shit. I was just like, girl, you gonna get enough of fighting on this goddamn show. <laughs> you will never win. Even when we ain't seen the fight, we know you didn't win. <laughs> but like I said, I, I'm not laughing at the fact that scrappy hit her. Because, you know... You, you just can't be hitting on no women, especially somebody big. Like, I mean, just it's just never a good look. So I understand why they blacked it out, but still. Oh, damn, I wanted to see that shit. Now, Mama D feel bad, okay, which is ironic, okay, because you the one to raise a nigga, all right? You didn't raise them to be this one that, you know, don't be serious about no women and just be out there and have fun. This whole pimp mentality. Yet and still, you feel bad about the fact that your son went out and bust this bitch in the head. Whatever, Mama D. You know, I'm just not impressed by her going over there. But, you know, she goes over there. And, what? Well, I mean, what am I supposed to say to this part? It's obvious that she's used to this type of treatment from men. Um, because, you know, we didn't saw literally your wig get pushed back. And you still sitting up there making excuses for, you know, him and saying how, you know, you can tell that he's a good person underneath. And then, look, that is classic ab abused woman talk, okay? Because, you know, you shouldn't be concerned about whether or not the motherfucker is a good person. Now, you should be concerned about the fact that he just beat your ass, okay? And if he did it once, he gonna do it again. A girl is upset that he said that he wouldn't do these things to her and uh, knowing her background and knowing the shit that she's been through you know he's calling her bum bitches you know all the shit that she never thought that he would do and this was you know if this should have been an eye opener to her that he never really had that type of respect for you anyway and i was just like oh honey open your eyes you know i'm not gonna tease her you know as a woman you know that shit is fucked up when men do this to women but you know i i really do need her to open her eyes and realize what it is okay and uh, mama d assures her that you know it's not ever gonna happen again that it wasn't right and that it should have happened and you know that she gonna make sure that she whoops scrappy's ass when she get home <laughs> Stevie says that he's been sleeping in the bunker because um, the Puerto Rican tornado is still upset about the shit that happened. Okay, that all that little that little piddly stuff about him sleeping with Althea. He said he ain't smashed a girl, and you guys know that's his story, and he's sticking to it. Well, you know, Jocelyn don't believe that shit, and girl, we don't believe it either. <laughs> Stevie J's tired of sleeping in in the damn bunker. Okay, he want to come back upstairs because he want him some ass. I ain't giving him no cootie cat because first of all, he don't deserve it. First is the drama with baby mama. Then he got drama with Benzino 
old lady. You saw always pictures or, or, or tests. <laughs> go to that goddamn Texas again. <laughs> like, what else can I take? I'm not having sex with you. Why should I have sex with you? I'm keeping this cootie cat to myself. <laughs> cootie cat. <laughs> So she's fussing at him. She's tired of hearing shit, you know, from everybody else. When are you going to be the man that you were supposed to be? And I was just like, uh, excuse me, Jocelyn. I hate to break it to you, but this is the man that you got, okay? The motherfucker is 40-something years old. Ain't no more changing to it. And, you know, it's the same conversation that they always have. He making light of the situation like he always does. And she's fussing at him like she always do. Stevie not going to ever tell me he cheated on me. He not going to ever tell me he obey. I had sex with another woman. I could die. And I'm not never going to know that answer. Nope. Deny, deny, deny. I done told y'all that it was the cheater player handbook, right? <laughs> so, you know, she says Stevie J is nondescript. The nigga will fuck anybody, okay? Even a dog off the street with no fur. I seen some of the girls that Stevie J has sex with and they are a mess. He got filet mignon at home and he want to go deal with hamburger helper. I don't know what's wrong with hamburger helper. Fuck, I just made some hamburger helper last night. The three cheese lasagna. Mm -hmm, off the hook. <laughs> Anyways, you know, she really starts to show her um, true colors when she was just like, she knows that Althea fucked him uh, for the same reasons that she did. Okay, it's just for the come up. Classic whole talk, you guys. We have to remember that Jocelyn is from the streets. Okay, she's got a little bit of the old prostitute street mentality she warns him that if he don't get his shit together that she's about to be out he gonna move away so far that he ain't gonna never see even see her again and i was just like oh, okay jocelyn whatever now jocelyn and carly they go um have lunch okay because they still got to you know they got to meet up and talk about this shit with uh althea the one thing that they have in common i don't even know why carly is so fucking concerned but whatever Jocelyn said that, you know, Stevie J is full of shit and that he's a liar and he's still saying that he didn't do it. Carly is all amazed, okay? She's trying to be the supportive girlfriend. Why won't he say it? You know, I mean, y'all are married. Just tell the truth. I was just like, <laughs> y'all say it with me. Shut up, Carly. Oh, but wait a minute. Jocelyn got something for his ass. I'm gonna tell you like this, Carly. I'm over his ass and I'm going out of town. I need to see some other men, some other women. I need to see people. Like, I'm always just seeing him. Everything I see is just, is just him. I don't want to see him. Y'all, she this close to leaving, and, you know, she's going to get her own apartment and fuck it, okay? And everybody think that she can't live without him, but she definitely can do that. You know what I think of my husband as? As my trick. I'm not thinking about him, and I'm going out of town, and I'm going to do me. And anything else don't even matter right now, because it's all about Jocelyn Hernandez. When it's all about me, it's all about me. And I'm not thinking about him or no throwback asshole. Okay, so again, more of your whole talk. Okay, that shit was kind of tough to hear. I was just like, damn, you think of your husband as your trick? I mean, you talking like this, you want us to take this fucking marriage seriously? <laughs> just pimp and hoes. Ain't I told you that? Pimp and hoes. All right, and lastly, you guys, Benzino. He's still very emotional about being shot. Um, you know, the doctor even makes it plainer for him when he's looking at the x-rays and the doctor is telling him where the bullet hit and you can see how close it was to his heart and how close it was to his spine. I mean, the shit could have went left real fast and uh, he could either have been paralyzed or he could be dead, okay? So, you know, he's got some things to live for. You know, he sees life differently, changes your perspective and all of that okay we've seen it happen okay we i had a friend who was who was quite the hell raiser back in the day okay the nigga used to just be always in some shit and the nigga almost got killed um and much like benzino you know he changed his whole outlook okay he was he he loved everybody <laughs> he would tell everybody he loved you and everything you was just like oh i almost said his name you just was like okay I see the changes, okay? This person has totally made changes, all right? The problem is that sometimes the shit don't last. So, you know, we got a nigga going from being, you know, loving everybody to robbing banks and, you know, beating motherfuckers in the mall parking lot for foot like a bags and shit. So, <laughs> we gonna see how long it lasts with Benzino. Hopefully, he's had a total change of heart. But good for Benzino that he was able to survive this, this um, shooting because a lot of people are not as lucky. He gets home from the doctor's office and he's discussing with Althea how he feels about everything. And, uh, you know, he tells Althea how he tried to talk to Stevie J about, you know, Althea and Stevie J's past relationship and how Stevie J tried to deny it. Um, Benzino knows that Stevie J is denying it because he ain't trying to get into no shit with Jocelyn. And I think we all know that at this point because, like I said last week, 
Ain't no woman trying to punch their whole card for nothing more than what they have already done, okay? Now, I know some women will decline, decrease the number, definitely, but we ain't, we ain't inflating no numbers at all, all right? And like Althea said, okay, if Stevie J is not going to come clean to this whole thing, then I don't want to be around them because now it's put me in a difficult situation, okay? Jocelyn is feeling some kind of way about me, and I just don't need to be around that shit. Totally makes sense, okay? So, yeah, Stevie J is really the problem in all of this right now. So, you know. We know Benzino, he been he been itching to get with this girl and, and get her engaged, okay? So he takes her on a Ferris wheel ride out here in Atlanta. Okay, he got his champagne, okay, and he got his speech. Althea, she got like this her voice is sort of like, you know, you know what it kind of reminds me of? Y'all remember when Chloe, every time she used to be around Lamar, she would have that baby voice. He would always be like, okay, Liam, what do Lammy say? Uh, I don't know, Lammy. <laughs> she used to get on my nerves and Althea still got that same kind of baby, you know, oh, baby, are we going to make love on, are we going to together? Are we going to make love on your bed, on your fairish floor? or not but you know uh, you know I have some friends that get like that real baby lit ish you know around they man I think maybe they, they feel like that shit is sexy or anyway y'all let me get back to the story so they're on the Ferris wheel and you know Benzino say his story about how he love her and all of that and he pop open the champagne and she'll get like oh baby now we can't really love on the bed, on the I don't know why I keep wanting, wanting to say bathroom now we not gonna be able to make love on the Ferris wheel <laughs> Anyway, he get on down there and uh, he pulls out the ring and he's like, will you marry me? And you know, she, I mean, I guess she tried to squeeze out a little tear and shit came, but you know, she was just like, oh, baby. Oh. <laughs> So he put the ring on her finger and she's emotional and they start tongue kissing and you know all of that and I was just like child like yes if you happy then I'm happy okay Rocky do love love. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is For It's Rocks. And everything I do will be... <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Distraction. And everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right? All right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.